Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 17, which is The Reunion, part one. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, so I just watched The Reunion today, about an hour ago, because I have been trapped. I have been watching The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Oh my God, if you have watched this documentary, please get down in the comments and let me know what you are thinking. I was all over Twitter. I mean, I just couldn't believe this. I mean, I still don't understand. I don't know. Have you ever listened to someone's story and then you listen to the other person who was involved in the story and you think they're both lying? I felt as if everybody involved was lying with a tiny bit of truth mixed in. It was really just a very interesting, crazy documentary. I don't know. Anyway, besides that, I was watching the Vanderpump Rules reunion and honey, now listen, something is wrong with Raquel. I don't understand why she doesn't have any emotions about any of this. You know, people are crying, they are breaking down, they are screaming, they're hollering, they're cussing, they're screaming, they're talking, all kinds of mess. And she's just sitting there as if she's thinking, look, there's a rainbow. You know, there's nothing going on in her head. I don't understand what the heck is going on. And then that comment she made to Andy thinking that her and Ariana could get past this. Girl, are you crazy? And then she also made that comment that the only thing her and Tom lied about was the affair. What? Girl, that's the most important part. You were her best friend and you were having an affair with her life partner of the last nine years in this woman's house. She even said by she, I mean Ariana, Ariana said that one night her and Tom were in bed together. Tom crawled out of bed and went in the guest room and had the sex with Raquel. Girl, no. Girl, no. You lucky your legs still work. I'm telling you, Tom would have got towed up and Raquel would have definitely got tore the hell up. I'm serious. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I mean, geez, you are so disrespectful. You are smiling up in this woman's face and then sleeping with her man behind her back. And did anybody notice that she also made the comment to Tom when they were in a trailer that, um, you know, she was a little taken aback by the comments that Tom was actually having the sex with Ariana. Are you taken aback? that he's having the sex with his real girlfriend. And then he did a little jig talking about what well, she called him a fashion icon. She was nice to him. She liked his little shimmery pants. And that ended up in the bed. Boy, bye. Raquel, you're an idiot. And Tom, I have no words for you. You worm with a mustache. I've had it. Anyway, let me move on. Cause this is not about Vanderpump Rules or Natalia. Whew have mercy. So at the beginning of the show, I have to agree with Andy when he says that Teresa looks great with her uh, shorter length hair. I thought that short hair was really cute. She was really doing it. And of course, you know, here's Teresa coming in, smiling, saying hi to everyone. Andy's giving her smiles and compliments and you got bit up Betty trout mouth off to the side talking about, I didn't even say hi to her. And I would just like to say that nobody cares. Girl. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. She didn't need a high from you, Marge. Now, it was real cute to get a little call from Juicy Joe right at the top of the reunion and to find out that he was calling Teresa just to get Bill's information so he could get his uncle's under eye bags taken care of. You know, I appreciate Joe, you know, looking out for his uncle. And you could absolutely tell that Andy was really excited to hear Juicy on the phone. And you know, I never thought that I would miss Juicy Joe, but I do a little bit. Before they can get the reunion started good, Teresa has Andy check her paw and then she has a little namaste, a little prayer. I said, oh God, that's a bit much. Woman, calm down. 
you know, Teresa starts out, you know, wishing Melissa well. You know, she says, this chapter is closed. The first thing I thought of was Nene Leakes. The door is closed. The door is closed. Teresa starts out letting everybody know that she is done with Melissa and Joe. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but at the same time, it may be the best thing for them to separate for a while. You know, time heals all wounds. Maybe if they separate for a while, they'll have a chance to calm down. You know, the old saying, cooler heads prevail. So maybe just separate for a little while and see what happens. I really do hate to see a family break up over a bunch of bull. Andy tells Teresa that he owes her a wedding gift and she says, but you already gave us a gift. And he said, oh no, that was just something for that day. So I wonder what it was. Was it a nice bottle of bourbon or something that he gave them just for that day? And what is the gift that she'll be getting? You know, Daddy Warbucks has a little money. I'm just saying. Teresa talking about, can't they just act like the girls of Beverly Hills? Listen. Teresa, have you seen the Beverly Hills reunions? They act quite foolish as well. They get loud and rowdy too. I mean, they don't get as bad as New Jersey, but come on. And then Melissa making the comment that Teresa's not Beverly Hills. Teresa may not be Beverly Hills, but she's the Kyle Richards of the New Jersey, period. Andy thinks that Kyle Richards hung the moon over there at Beverly Hills. Same for Teresa, I'm just saying. Even though if you look at part one of the reunion, it does seem as if Andy is team Gorgas right now. He is amening and shaking his head a lot on the Gorga team, I'm just saying. Melissa makes this comment that Teresa was trying to hurt her by bringing up the cheating thing. And this is what I have to say about it. First of all, Melissa already admitted on the show that Teresa had already told Joe she already knew about this a long time ago. Then later at the end of the show, when they showed the previews for next week, you see them bring up that Jennifer had already told Melissa about this. So I'm looking at Teresa and Jennifer with the side eye, because first of all, remember in my video, I said, if Teresa knew that Jennifer had told Danielle, why didn't Teresa tell Danielle that Melissa and Joe already knew and that she didn't think it was a good idea to bring it up on camera? Now we find out that Jennifer also told Melissa. So it does seem as if they set Danielle up for this because they wanted this to be brought out. It almost seems as if they wanted to, number one, use Danielle and two, embarrass the hell out of Melissa, which is not okay because if you already told her off camera, she didn't need to bring it on to the show because remember Jennifer, your kids were devastated and hurt by Marge bringing up your husband's affair. Why would you do it to Melissa's kids? Her children deserve respect as well. I'm not here for that. I think that Teresa and Jennifer absolutely had something to do with this. And they set this up, in my opinion. Peeps, get down in the comments and let me know. Do you think that Teresa and Jennifer set Danielle up just to throw Melissa under the bus? Because I sure do. Now listen, when they brought up Dana not coming to the wedding, Teresa was not lying. Teresa was absolutely telling the truth about it because Dina did do a podcast a few months back and she said, first of all, her husband never called Joe Gorga. Second of all, she said that her husband did not have any shady or bad business deals with Louie. Third, she said she didn't come to Teresa's wedding because she didn't want to be in town. She didn't want people to know that she was in town due to the situation that she had with her ex-husband. And she knew that being at Teresa's wedding was going to be huge. A lot of people would know that she was there. It would be people posting online. It would be filmed. And then other family members would know that she was in town. So for safety reasons, that is why she didn't want to come to Teresa's wedding. She also mentioned that she rarely comes to New Jersey and when she does she says it's usually for one or two days and she sneaks in to see her grandmother or somebody like that and then she leaves quickly so this whole little side story that Joe and Melissa are trying to propel don't believe it now Teresa arguing back and forth with Melissa about inviting her mom to this wedding it was just a whole bunch of BS Teresa listen girl 
Melissa brought receipts. You are talking about, well, she didn't invite us to dinner. First of all, who gives a damn? Second of all, Melissa came prepared. She had photos and everything. She had invited you to dinner. The point is this, if you didn't want her mama and the rest of her family at your wedding, just stand up in it. When Andy asked you, all you had to say was, I didn't invite her mom and her siblings to my wedding because I didn't want them at my wedding. Just say that. Don't dance around sounding crazy because right now Melissa has shown that you're lying. Don't do it, Teresa. If you didn't want them people there, just say, I don't want them there. I'm telling you right now, this whole thing is ridiculous. I'm tired of the song and dance. I want off the roller coaster. I want off. You didn't, they didn't come. You know, Joe and Melissa was not at the wedding. Her family was not at the wedding. You know, it doesn't make sense. Now, honey, listen, I'm team Melissa. Good God, Melissa was killing it this episode. She was really bringing some true information. I'm believing Melissa here. I absolutely believe that Louis was begging to be on the show. 100%. Not only do I believe that this man was begging to be on the show, I absolutely 100% believe that he knew who the hell Teresa was. I also believe that it was a setup for him to be on that beach the day Teresa was there. I think that Louis is an opportunist. I also think that Louis is trying to separate Teresa from her family. I think that Louis is, saw Teresa as a mark. This is a single mother who misses the arms of a man. She's on national TV and I can have a come up. I absolutely believe that. Now the part that I don't believe is that he was trying to get with this Alexia or I don't watch Miami, but I think it's Alexia or is it Alexis? I don't know something. Anyway, I saw a recent interview with Teresa and Louie and she admits that when her and Louie first met, she was already engaged. So I don't know if Louie was trying to get with her or not. It's possible. I mean, engaged is not married. And sometimes it don't matter if you're married, you know, according to Margaret Dolores and Bill, I'm just saying anyway, I don't know, but I do think that he 100% is an opportunist and he was after Teresa. He knew exactly who she was. I mean, how many people do you know that don't even watch The Real Housewives of New Jersey and they know who Teresa Judice is? You think Louie didn't know who she was? I absolutely believe he knew exactly who that woman was. Now listen, when Teresa made this comment that Melissa is leaving, I think that that was a bold statement to make because Teresa is popular. She has been there from day one. The fans love Teresa, but there's also a lot of fans who don't like Teresa. There's fans who love Melissa. There's also fans who don't like Melissa. Um, Teresa does not have the final say. That say of who goes, who stays, falls upon Andy and not just Andy, but the other executive producers of the show as well. And I think that statement could, I'm not saying that it will, but that statement could come and hit her right back in the face. They could say, you know what, Teresa, we've decided eh, we're going to go the Gorga way and you could be gone. I would never say something like that to someone else because you never know what could happen. You know, right now they are saying that they're on pause just briefly so that they could revamp the show. They're saying that they have not sent out contracts to anybody yet because they are not sure who's staying or who's going. So, you know, Teresa, I wouldn't say stuff like that. She did, however, say that no matter what happens, pretty much, and I'm paraphrasing, that Joe and Melissa are out of her life. After this reunion, she is done. Now, Margaret, coming out with that comment about how she's disgusted and re you know, and it's repulsive, you know, that Louie has a private investigator. You know what, Margaret, I think you're just upset, disgusted and repulsed because you didn't think of it first. You know, you've got an arsenal, but Louie can't have one. Is that what you're saying? You're allowed to get on this show and be just as disgusting as you want to be, but nobody else can. Girl, you are the biggest hypocrite on this show and I'm tired of you. Now this situation with Frank living in David's house, um, 
I think that Frank is a certified bum. I really do. I find it weird, odd, and ridiculous that a grown ass man in his 50s is living with his ex-wife's ex-boyfriend. And another thing that I find really odd is that he has this grown girlfriend who is willing to pack an overnight bag to, to come to David's house, to lay up in David's house under David's roof having the sex with this grown 50 some year old man. I think it's gross. I think it's terrible. And you know, we don't need Frank on this show anymore. Dolores has moved on. Frank is bringing nothing. And it's just odd to me. And I agree with Andy. You know, the man who built my house, he don't live here. He really does it. This is crazy. And no wonder Pauly doesn't want anything to do with Frank. Polly said, I'm dating Dolores, not you. This is too much. I don't know, peeps, get down in the comments. What do you think? Do you think that Frank should still be living at David's house just because he built the house? What kind of weird friendship is this? Anyway, you know, this whole thing with Polly not being divorced after 14 years, did anybody notice all the faces on the ladies when she said that he was still married? Honey, listen, they all looked shocked, except for Marge, because I think Marge has already investigated Polly. You know, Dolores says that he's been separated for 14 years. I have absolutely no clue why someone would be separated for 14 years. Why the delay in the divorce? I mean, at least she didn't break up his family. He was already, you know, separated and living on his own, but still. I did see somewhere recently that his divorce is almost final. So at least he is actually going forward with the divorce. But mm -mm, I'm sorry, I don't understand any of that. I do still wish the best for Pauly and Dolores. Did anybody see Andy make the comment that his son is now saying that he wants a second daddy? And Teresa told Andy that she would give him her psychic's information. She said, you can call my psychic. It's only a hundred dollars. I said, oh my God, that is hilarious. And you know, I bet you nine times out of 10, at some point that psychic's advertisement is gonna end up on Teresa's Instagram. And I certainly hope she's not the tea leave lady cause we don't want her, mm -mm, no ma'am. And I hope it's not that lady that uh, Camille uses cause we don't want her either. Really, so Your, was Louis was money. begging when we were at the girls trip, um. just so you know, before he was on the housewives, he kept telling Joe that whole week, let's fly out there and get on the show. Okay. So he, he did want to be on TV. Okay. No, he does not want to be just on like TV. Just like he knew who you were when he met you. No, he did not. Yes, he, he most did. certainly did. He knows him. Alexia too. Oh, yeah, he so wanted to go out with oh, Alexia. Oh, like you know, you know him that well? Oh, it's like gonna be over after tonight. I can't wait. Oh, Come can't oh wait. why? Where are you going? You're leaving. Oh, I am? All right. Oh, yes. wow. I didn't oh, you know, think she's Andy. leaving the show? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to coexist the two well, of us. She just told me I'm leaving. Well, maybe so by I guess... the end of the day, we'll figure it out. Yeah. If she left, does that mean she would be out of your life? Definitely. She's got to be out of my life after tonight. I am repulsed and disgusted and shocked. What show I don't did know. you watch? You, I she think had you nothing know. to do with no it. No one's talking nothing. to you. Nothing. Nothing. I don't care about Laura. I don't give two shits about that. I care about private investigators. We'll talk about Bo Deedle, Deedle Dumb, and Deedle Dwee. Does he still live there? Yes. Frank still lives with David? Mm hmm. You respond to that as though it's normal. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um... So, like, Brittany sleeps over at David's house? Yeah. To Does each he pay his own. rent? Oh, I have no idea what that setup is. Frank did build the house. Okay, well, I mean, someone built my house too. He's not staying with me. Listen. How long has he been divorced, Paul? He's not. Why? He's been separated for 14 years. Uh, August will be three years, but I'm actually gonna see him tomorrow. You know. Do you think he watched? This was his favorite show. No. I think it's pretty ironic. So he definitely watched. I mean, it is ironic. He it would is have wound a little up ironic. on the show. I he mean, wa yeah. I know nothing about well, your how family. Would she you flipped on me like a pancake. No, I didn't. Where are you in your friendship with Danielle? Uh, I did look at you as a young mom with kids. I was kind of excited. I like fresh. I like your energy. And I thought so, that you would be fun. So New people. You want to make friends with Danielle, right? I, I like get, Danielle. I get, yes. Yeah, I get I'm it. I'm such a I nice person. It. I know. Why, Sto what storyline. 
Now, Danielle and her brother, Marge, girl, save that BS apology. Save it. Save it. We don't need it. We don't want it. And I agree with Danielle 100%. She don't want to be like you. Those girls are mean girls and she knows it. I also thought it was quite weird when Marge brought up endorsements, Melissa threw the Razzie, started laughing and threw her whole head back. What the hell is you laughing about? And why is Marge throwing all these digs at Jennifer? Who gives a dag on it if Jennifer has endorsements or not? We don't care if you have endorsement, Marge. We don't care if you have endorsements or Danielle has endorsements. It is not a big deal. Jennifer is living her life. She is living in that house with them 16 bathrooms. Listen. She, uh-uh, Marge, stay out this woman's business. And Jennifer, please sit back and shut the hell up. We don't care. Now, Danielle says that she's gonna see her brother, which means she's seen him since. I'm just hoping, you know, I'm sorry for the loss because they're gonna be seeing each other at a funeral. I hope that they realize that life is short and that they are family and that they truly love each other. If this really was about the Instagram beef, they should just let it go. Let it go, it's not that important. And just to say it again, whatever the core reason is, whatever the 100% true reason is for Danielle and her brother's fallout, she doesn't owe that information to any of those women on that couch or Andy or us. That is her family business. She told them what she wanted them to know. Now back the hell off this woman. And you were the butt of their mean girl jokes. It's disgusting. It's total mean girl mentality. They think that they're better. And you call me a wannabe, and it's exactly the truth. I want to be nothing like you. So all of you, you can make fun of everything that I wear, how I talk, how I do my hair. Fine. You've had a great first season. Listen, you got a ton of endorsements. <laughs> I think it's great. Unlike some people who've Excuse been here. Excuse me, I don't need endorsements. That sure. what she said twisted it. Everybody keeps telling us like, Margaret has an arsenal of stuff on women. I don't like that, the talky thing. No, I know. But I think she's maybe a little too judgmental on Jen. When I was shopping with Danielle, she was saying that you have like this like arsenal. So it did Danielle it was more take mild. the brunt of this? It didn't seem like a big deal no, to me it wasn't, watching it. No, it wasn't as big of a deal. Do you feel like Rachel misrepresented it? The no, conversation. I don't think Absolutely. she just said. Absolutely she did, Andy. No one asked you, Jen. It doesn't matter. Well, I want to know from the others, I actually. Would love you to think hear it. it was misrepresented. And she was fueling the fire. Well, she wait, was no, it's because you didn't let it go. You guys wait, talked wait, about wait. it all season. And you know what? I should have just not answered you. Because that was a setup question. No, was and it? I, yeah, it was. We were having I've a very deep longer. discussion on the bus. Setup question. We were having Thank an you. open conversation. But, but I would expect you to her to ask Melissa instead of Teresa. You guys have talked about Gia and no. said oh things. Really? You talked Gia? about that. I got you talked so about Gia on your podcast. That. No, we didn't. Yeah. So you free said that the kids have hate, hate for in their me. hearts. For me. They okay. do not. Because they, they sat there not. at the party. Okay. They said what they said to me. You see all the reactions on TV this year. Have you ever once on this show I heard my daughter okay. say a negative uh, thing about done? my sister-in-law? No, I don't. Do your kids hate Melissa? No, I don't hate her. Gabriella just wished her a happy birthday. That's her They're disappointed. Just wished her a happy birthday. And I did the same with Gabriella. Uh, if you see daddy upset over her. The reason why she did that, we're filming a TV show. Okay, well. Very um, calculated. Oh, I know, because my children have Very never calculated. said a word on the TV Very show calculated. about you. you. Said you put God food bless. on my table. My brother came to food see me on one someone's day table. On, Who? In, in jail. Guess and, why? And he wasn't on rolling. the list. He wasn't because on the, the list, Teresa, until it was going to benefit you for the Teresa checks in. Then he was no, suddenly uh, on the list. No. You got your man, and now we're pieces of shit. Exactly. All right. Now, when they talk about the comment that she made about she'll forgive, but she won't forget, I don't know why that was such a big deal. I appreciate Andy for calling them out for being mean girls, especially Marge. And I don't understand it still. That is something that has been said for years upon years upon years. And it is true in my life. If someone does some shady shit to me, I will try to forgive them. I will get over the hurt and the upset and I will forgive them, but I will not forget the shit you did to me. 
Will I mistreat you over it over and over again after I said I accepted your apology? No. But if you ever pull some shit on me again, that is when we are done. That is when I remember, hey, you've tried this crap with me before. You remember the whole fool me once, fool me twice thing? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I will forgive you for the BS that you did to me, but I'm not gonna forget that you did it because I need to be on the lookout for the next time that you might try to do some crap to me. I'm just saying, I don't understand why Marge thinks that she is some sort of morality police or that she can offer advice to anyone. If you're not giving advice on how to backstab somebody, how to get sued or how to steal a husband, I don't wanna hear it. I'm just saying. Now here it is again, I'm on Melissa's side of this. Goodness gracious, I wasn't expecting this. Y'all know I love me some Teresa, but Teresa makes that comment that Melissa was just trying to be friends with Danielle for storyline. I don't buy it. I really don't. When I see those scenes with Melissa and Danielle, it looks legit. I think that Melissa really did like Danielle. Now, did she use Danielle sorta through the season? A little, because every chance she got to bring up the whole Marge and Arsenal thing or the Danielle called Rachel a rat, she brought it up. You know what I mean? She's got to get something on screen, but I don't think that she was using Danielle for storyline at all. Now, what I did love is that the editors put in the little clip. They showed Danielle and Rachel talking and Danielle tells Rachel, everyone is saying that Marge has an arsenal. I think she might be a little too judgmental. Rachel goes back and tells Marge that Danielle said she had an arsenal. Thank you for proving that. Rachel absolutely is a shit starter. She is a foot soldier for Marge. I don't care what anybody says, especially not Marge when or Dolores when they came back and said, well, she just repeated what she heard. No, she didn't repeat it exactly like she heard. She went back and told them repeatedly, Danielle said you have an arsenal. Danielle said that they, meaning Teresa and Jennifer said that Marge has an arsenal. Uh-uh, Rachel, that's a bunch of BS. No, ma'am. And when they asked Marge, when she saw the scene, did she realize that Rachel may have put a little razzle dazzle on it? And I'm paraphrasing. And they tried to act as if, no, no, she didn't. She didn't. Give me a break. I am 100% team Andy on this. This is a whole bunch of BS. You guys wasted like 10 episodes going back and forth over this Arsenal situation. Let it go and grow the hell up. And Danielle and Rachel, all this back and forth screaming and hollering makes no sense. However, I do appreciate that Danielle was standing up for herself. She wasn't sitting back whining and crying like she has been. You've got to stand up for yourself in this group of ladies, okay? Otherwise, they will walk all over you, chew you up and spit you out. I'm just saying, this little Dolores got them to make up crap, give me a break. If for some reason the both of them make it to next season, by the second episode, they'll be fighting again. I'm just saying, whatever. Melissa in the outside of that house. Girl, listen, the outside of that house was a mess. But that's just my opinion. And just like she said, she's the one who has to live in it. And she's the one paying for it. I can't afford that unattractive house. So my opinion does not matter. And she is absolutely right about that. Other people's opinions of her house is not important and does not matter. What matters is how her Joe and her family feel about that house. Not my business. Now listen, this whole thing with the kids, Antonia, Teresa's kids, everything, as we have said before, I don't think that Teresa should have brought up Antonia. The situation with Antonia not coming to Melania's event had nothing to do with you guys arguing back and forth. I know Teresa was upset about it, but that is between Teresa and Joe. At that point, Antonia is a minor and she didn't even have a car or a driver's license. It's if her parents can get her to and from where she needs to go, this is not about Antonia. I do agree with Teresa 100% when she says it's a setup question. It is an absolute setup question because if, if Rachel is such good friends with Melissa, she already knows that this situation with the kids is starting to crack. She should have had this conversation with Melissa, not Teresa on the bus in front of everybody. Now, Melissa making that comment that Teresa's kids have 
hate in their hearts. That's a whole bunch of BS. Teresa's kids are tired. They have been through this with you guys since you joined the show. They are over it. We saw, what was it, Gia last season have to get Joe all the way together about talking shit about her dad in front of her, her mom, and her siblings. Sometimes Melissa and Joe do too much. And the whole thing that they were on there talking about, they put food on the table. Listen, I am absolutely 150% sure that when Joe and Melissa were on that Teresa Checks In episode, they didn't do it for free. They got paid. The same way Joe and Teresa got paid, Joe and Melissa got paid. Not only that, she wanted to bring up, he didn't even get to go to, he, he wasn't even on your list to go to jail. We saw in the episode that Joe didn't even apply to be on Teresa's list until he was a part of the show. So I cannot, I can't stand behind Melissa on this one. No, ma'am. You and Joe got paid to be a part of this show. You could have said no. The show still would have went on because Joe was there and so was his family and so were the girls. They could have still filmed the show without you and Joe Gorga. You came on the show, you went to see Teresa that one time and that one time only, you got a check and went on about your business. Uh-uh, Melissa, I can't back that one. Either way, I think that Teresa shouldn't have brought up Antonia and I think that Joe and Melissa should stop talking so badly about Teresa's children. None of the children should be brought up, period. I do agree with Melissa though, her kids have never said anything bad about Joe, Teresa, or Louie. Melissa's kids do not talk about this. And I don't care what Teresa says, Melissa may have had that conversation with Antonia because they were filming just to have something to say on camera, but I truly believe that this is a conversation that Melissa would have had with Antonia anyway because she was concerned that her kids were getting upset by all of this. I, I wish they would all just leave these kids alone. Now that ball player comment, I'm over it. I really am. And I wish that Jennifer would leave it alone, stop bringing it up, move forward. I think that Marge absolutely realizes that uh, Joe Gorga, Mr. Macho Man, Tiny Hawk himself is a complete ass. And I think that on multiple occasions, she tries to let Melissa know that she can do better. I don't think it was a joke at all. I think Marge is letting Melissa know on a regular basis that Joe Gorga is not the end all. Now, honey, listen, just for the record, Andy should really bring Laura on the show. I really do think the next season should be the Marge takedown season. Um, Melissa saying that they put her on the show because she was interested Melissa, I'm sorry, honey, but to this very moment, you still are not interested. I have never thought that she was interesting. I'm sorry. Now, Teresa making that comment where she said she takes it back. She doesn't think that Caroline turned her over to the FBI. Listen, I posted in my video last week, Caroline is saying that it was somebody else. And Teresa is saying that Jacqueline told her that it was Joe and Melissa. I don't know. Get down in the comments. What do you guys think? Do you think that Joe and Melissa dropped the dime on Teresa and Juicy Joe? It's possible, but will we ever find out? I don't know, but I can't wait to see next week's part two. And until next time, you guys, bye.